Business Sidekick. Hello and welcome. I'm Justyna, content writer at LiveChat, and this is the one and only Business Sidekick. In the last episodes, I was talking with my guests about the best applications every business should have and when you should start to think about opening your social media channels. Now it's time for email marketing. My today's guest is Michał Leszczyński, content manager at GetResponse, an email marketing platform. Enjoy! Business Sidekick. Hello, Michał. Uh, thanks for accepting my invitation. Hello, thank you for having me. Can you tell me, in short, what are you doing on a daily basis? Um, my name is Michael Leszczyński and I'm the content marketing manager at a company called GetResponse. So I manage all the content marketing projects, I plan them, implement them and uh, co-author some of the kind of pieces that we produce. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so the topic of today's podcast is um, um, email marketing. So can you tell me something about it? Why, Why email marketing is so important and what are the benefits of it? So email marketing is just another form of uh, promotion of marketing. Uh, well, this one uses email to send valuable information and valuable assets, resources to your audience. So it's, there are a few reasons why it's important and why it's useful, really. Uh, it's because it's relatively inexpensive. Uh, all you have to do is collect email addresses of your audience and send them the messages, craft them, and you can actually use ready-made templates uh, to just make your life easier. Uh, it's also reliable. So unlike uh, social media channels where you have to fight with the uh, algorithms to get your message uh, shown to your audience, with email, if you have your deliverability straight, then your message will always land in your uh, audience's mailboxes. It doesn't have to be the inbox. It doesn't have to be at the top. It all depends on the hour, but it's going to go there. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is it's measurable, so it's quite easy to see the results of email marketing campaigns that you send. Mm -hmm. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, how can it be implemented? You know, so if if I don't know anything about email marketing, how how can I start my journey with it? Sure. If if you've never had any. Uh, chance any go at email marketing. There are a few ways to do it. Uh, the easiest one is probably pay an agency to do it for you. So they have the email database or you provide them with your own and send the emails for you. But that's sometimes an uh, expensive way to do it. Um, you can also just have your own mailing server, your own admin to do it for you. But that usually just takes too much of the resources uh, based on uh, well, when it comes to people. Um, and probably the easiest way to do it is using an ESP, which is an email service provider. So it's just like any other software as a service. You plug it in, you pay monthly, and if you ever uh, are bored with it, you can get rid of it and stop paying. So that's probably the easiest way to go about email marketing. And this is probably one of the best solutions for especially starting companies because mm -hmm. uh, ESPs have some uh, some experience with uh, delivering your emails. They have the solutions ready-made. So you don't really need to care or think about getting your emails delivered. All you have to do is provide valuable content to your audience. Mm -hmm. So basically when you have the software, you have to have an um, email list of your customers and you, you write a template of an email and you can send a bulk um, emails to, to, your, to your audience, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have your own email database. That's what we call uh, permission-based email marketing. Uh, so you don't do it to a rented or purchased list. That's something that we're against. Uh, and yeah, you can send the messages in bulk or you can actually automate them. So for example, whenever someone signs up to your list, they'll get an automatic message, a welcome message or a cycle of messages. So you don't have to send them all in at once, but they will be sending themselves mm -hmm. uh, as people sign up. Probably the best thing to do is to put an... Uh, pop-up or um, sign up form on your website. Pop-ups are something that people either feel that they're against them or for them. It really depends on how you go about it, but they're really effective. So uh, software such as GetResponse offers solutions that help you put those sign up forms on your website. And 
you have to tell your audience that there's this possibility to sign up to your email list and why they should do it. So, for example, if you put a uh, form on Facebook uh, page or on your own page, you should provide a benefit for signing up. So it's to keep up to date with the updates, with all the promotional codes or promotional information, or be the first person to get the latest information from your brand. It has to be something that's really valuable to your audience. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a piece of cake. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are the best practices for emails? Uh, sure. I mean, these days you need to realize that most people will be opening their messages on their mobile devices, so whilst on the go. So probably the number one thing I'd say is responsive design. So it's the same message that you send to all your audience, but it shows differently on different email devices, uh, different email clients. So if, if they open it up on a desktop, it's going to be expanded, it's going to be larger. And if it's on a mobile device, it's going to be uh, divided into blocks and it's going to be uh, well adjusted to, your, to the size of your uh, device. And on top of that, uh, probably one of the things I'd recommend is to uh, to do something that most companies don't do, so is to write in your in those emails, because most companies uh, just put a large image and a call to action. That's about it. But you have to have a proper ratio of text and images, because email clients will be filtering your messages based on how uh, how good of the content it is, and in their opinion, text is always a better um, a better message. So definitely put large images to show, like to show the emotions uh, and, you know, uh, say what words cannot say in such a short time, but do write a copy uh, that that resonates with your audience. And then put, of course, a, um, a call to action button if you want your audience to go somewhere. So direct them to a landing page where you will be sending, uh, you will be showing all the information. So probably uh, another thing I'd say is that emails are not supposed to sell, so you don't need to provide all the information in that message. You don't need to show everything about your product or your service there. Uh, all you have to do is inspire some interest and then just direct them to a landing page where everything else will be covered. It cannot be completely different and it cannot be like salesy, pushy boy now and do it now, etc. Uh, you have to work on the copy and make it interesting, make it uh, fun to read and really like to read. So even with call to action buttons, instead of uh, using words like submit because no one wants to submit or download, uh, you can use fun copy that like get this ebook or read about it, learn uh, learn more or read and comment stuff like that. So uh, you have to just align it with the uh, the tone of voice that you're using throughout the whole. Uh, marketing spectrum. Mm -hmm. So you sound like a human, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, since some of these messages will be sent in bulk, some of them will be automated. So someone might be thinking, oh, these are machines sending messages to us. But you have to sound like a marketer, like, uh, like a person. So, you know, you need to connect with your audience and build a relationship. And that's how you're going to uh, build loyalty with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, what are the greatest email mistakes? Uh, greatest email mistakes are the large images and using only images in your emails. Uh, because, well, it might look good in, in the you know graphic designer's mind, but m messages have to be delivered as well. So you have to look at the technical side of it and make sure that your messages will be actually sent to your audience and they will be able to s see them. So use the text, uh, use text and copy there as well. Uh, another one is uh, putting attachments in emails instead of putting oh my, attachments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's so old school. And putting videos in emails as well. Uh, most email clients will not support it. So you need to test the messages, how they look and whether they render well in, in different email clients. So if you can uh, test them before, then do so. And probably the last major mistake I'd say is just sending the messages to a purchase list. I know it's uh, relatively cheap to do, just buy a large uh, email database of people in your sector. But to be honest, if I get a message from the same brand uh, in one campaign since I opted in and another one because, just because, because someone purchased my email, I can see that I cannot really relate to that, uh, to that company. I cannot really form a bond with them because 
they don't really care about me. They send the same message to, to everyone and they want to sell as much as possible. Mm-hmm. And then probably you would mark such email as spam. And uh, that's another problem. I, um, I know I'm more... Uh, I'm more lenient when it comes to that, so I don't uh, mark messages as spam because I know how it affects the liver. Oh, liberability. I do, I do. <laughs> See, but that's good though. Uh, if you don't know why this message was sent to you, then definitely. The only problem is that there's this thing called feedback loop, uh, which basically means if you uh, if you mark this message as spam, uh, the brand that sent you this message will know that you want to be unsubscribed. And not all email providers uh, like Gmail, Outlook, etc. Not all, all of them provide a feedback loop. Okay, and um, how to measure the effectiveness of emails? Sure. Um, as I said at the beginning, email is very measurable, and most important metrics are open ratio and click through ratio. So if anyone opens your message, uh, then like a, a small pixel is being loaded. So Uh, the ESP knows that the message was opened and if someone clicks on the link uh, they're redirected through a separate domain so they will know that the link was clicked and then you can see uh, w- which sort of offers were interesting which ones uh, the people click on uh, the same goes for the messages and but you have more uh, more metrics such as bounces so how many of the messages were not delivered because of technical issues or because of uh, the way you created the message Uh, and probably the most important ones, uh, if you don't know if email marketing is, uh, like if your email marketing is doing well, is the unsubscribes and complaint ratio. Uh, so how many people unsubscribed after receiving your message or how many of them uh, complained and marked your message as spam? Uh, these definitely will show you if you're uh, sending too many emails or if you're not making it uh, clear why you're sending these emails or if you're not making... Uh, if you're not sending relevant information. So basically, uh, do you recommend testing uh, sending emails, like for example, changing uh, the email subject and changing the copy so it's more interesting? Sure, sure, definitely. Um, A-B testing is important. So uh, sending out different versions of the same email to make sure Uh, you send the same, uh, like send the best message to the most of your list. Uh, that's one of the things that we've learned over the years is that what you think is going to work best isn't always what your audience thinks. And sometimes you create a beautiful message, beautiful email, and uh, think that the call to action is very interesting. And then you send a regular one using a regular call to action or just a, a link, a text link. And then you see that this one has a better result. So at this moment, you're sad, probably disappointed that the test has proven you wrong. But then again, that's a good thing because automatically you can send the better message to the most of your list. And after after all, at the end of the day, it's your audience that decides uh, what you should be sending to them. Can you recall any case study that proven email marketing to be great for business? Sure. Um, there are plenty of great case studies out there. And I'm glad the marketers shared their ideas uh, with others, even if it's competitors, even if it's, uh, you know, different provider or software. It's great that they show their ideas how to run better campaigns, because after all, that's what we want to achieve too. Uh, we recently did a case study with a company called Hair Store. It's an e-commerce site uh, that sells uh, hair products, lotions, uh, gels, and so on. And We helped them out because they had the email list, but it wasn't growing as quickly as they wanted. Uh, and the messages wasn't uh, weren't read or they just didn't have that, enough transactions. So we just implemented a few things like a pop-up uh, that was looking almost exactly the same as the an embedded form. Then we put a sign-up form on Facebook uh, page and then we reminded the users that there there's this possibility to sign up to the email list and that they will be getting... Exp- uh, Um, they will be getting the only like um, limited content, so no one else would get uh, get to get it. So like exclusive content, uh, and that they will get a discount code as well. And then we create an, an onboarding cycle with messages that remind them about this uh, discount code, uh, some blog information, some re- re- um, useful content. And after that, we generated uh, more than 50% more signups generated 60% more visits 
and more uh, almost 30 no, 32 more transactions and that's just another example of how companies can shortly improve their results using a simple solution because we didn't use any uh, any abundant card or e-commerce uh, tools at that point yet so all we did is just create uh, simple pop-ups and automated welcome messages. Yeah, this, these results sound really amazing. And how much time did it take? A month? Uh, it took us a month to come up with the idea how to do it. And to implement it, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. So uh, we measured the results over three months. Uh, and that's, that's the results that we generated. We tried to make sure that they stay the same. And that's how it worked out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, it means that if you don't use email marketing, you should start it right now. All right, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Let's sum it up. Now it's my time to put two cents in. So, if you want to start your email marketing campaign, you should focus on following steps. First step, build your email list. Don't buy it. Don't copy it. Build it. It's quite easy in online businesses as almost every time your customer buys something from you, they give you their email so you can send them order details. But if you don't gather your customer's email, start doing it. Step two, choose the right software. I do recommend choosing an email platform as thanks to that you'll be able to send your campaigns really quickly so you get GetResponse, MailChimp or Campaign Monitor or other applications. They will help you to build your email from the scratch. You can add contacts, choose the right template and of course send it. Another step, establish your goals. Why do you want to start an email campaign? What do you want your recipients to do when they get your email? How do you want to measure your KPIs? It's worth spending some time thinking about what you want to achieve with your email campaign. Maybe you want them to buy more, then you can send them promo codes or information about sales. You can also educate them about your product or keep them engaged. Once you have your goals, choose the type of campaign you want to send. Will it be a regular newsletter, a marketing offer, an event, invitation or a survey? You choose. And last but not least. Monitor your results. All good email platforms give you the ability to check how successful your campaign was. What was the open rate, click-through rate, bounce rate, and <laughs> the most important one, unsubscribe rate. It will give you an overview of how your audience likes your emails and will let you test other templates and offers. Business Sidekick. Speaking of emails, visit our website livechatting.com slash podcast and subscribe to my newsletter. I won't send you many emails, one per two weeks and only best business information, I promise. Also, if you want, you can subscribe to Business Sidekick on iTunes, Stitcher and SoundCloud. That's all for today. Thanks for listening. All the best. This podcast was brought to you by Lifetime. Lifetime. Lifetime.